Good Monday makers and welcome back to another episode of Maker Pipe Monday. This week we're looking at a 3D printer stand, a trellis, a DIY hinge method, a mini fridge table, a rocket powered sled, and a trailer canopy. So there's a lot of great projects, a lot of cool stuff people are doing. Let's jump right in and check them out. First up is this project from Ronnie and this is a 3D printer stand. And the way that he built this was really clever. In case you don't know, you can get the MT conduit in the electrical aisle of you know Lowe's or Home Depot or a lot of different hardware or home stores and they sell it in either five foot or 10 foot lengths. And he knew that he wanted this to be five foot tall. So he said he just got four of these verticals in five foot lengths and just left them that long. Didn't make any cuts or anything, which is a really great way to kind of save on cutting. You can just buy, buy those. Another good way to do it would be if you bought two 10 foot sticks, you'll save a little bit of money. You could just cut those directly in half and then you'll have four or five foot pieces. It really just depends on what you're, what you're wanting to do. If you need to save space in a vehicle to haul a conduit home, this all depends. But the way he did this was smart. He got the four or five foot verticals. He used four 90 degree connectors, as you can see kind of up here, just to make the, the simple square. And I would imagine these four pipes are all the same length uh, because it looks like it's a perfect square. Can't totally tell, but I would imagine so. He just did that same kind of technique down here and you can adjust the, the connectors along these pipes if you needed this to be taller or uh, closer because you can see down here, the shelf is a little bit narrower and he's got his printer down there. And then above that, he's got a more open space for his 3D printer. So that's really smart. He said the shelves are Ikea uh, shelves that he had left over. Those are secured to the frame with one hole straps. So really great project, great design. Thanks so much, Ronnie, for sharing that. We love seeing it. Next up is a project from Heather and this is a versatile trellis that she built. So. It doubles as a trellis in the spring and summer, and then it also allows for a soft cloth uh, for kind of frost proofing in the winter. And this is really smart the way that she did this. She's got one of these raised galvanized steel garden beds, and you can see that they have a joint connection, and you just put four bolts through normally through the these panels here to connect them together. And what she did to secure the trellis framework to the bed was remove the top and bottom bolt from the raised bed and then put a bolt through that goes through a spacer that she made, looks like with PVC pipe, and then through the one hole strap there. And then on top of that is a nut. And she tightened all that together and it looks like it's holding the trellis really securely to the frame. I think she did that four times all the way around, one time in each corner, or I guess there's two holders per corner, which is a really smart thing to do. And she just sent verticals up. I'll see some 90 degree connectors in the corner and then it's braced with T-connectors. And here it is in kind of winter mode, we'll call it. And it has the frost cloth on top of it to protect the plants inside. And then here it is when it's in trellis mode, I can see some cattle panels up there. She's also got some trellis netting going down into the soil and uh, it looks really awesome. Great design and it looks like it's gonna work out well. Plants are already doing awesome. So that's, that's really great to see. Thanks so much, Heather, for sharing that. Really clever design, we love seeing it. Next up is a DIY hinge from Jason or Hank the Tank. And if you've been in the community recently or if you've seen our recent YouTube videos, we did an interview with Jason and uh, he kind of explained all kinds of different clever things that he's doing for his Honda Element camper conversion. And one of which is a bed that he designed to be modular. Sometimes he goes camping by himself. Sometimes he has several people with him. And, it, and really the bed that he needs to use all depends on how much space is being taken up by seats and different things like that. So he's working on a really clever bed that hinges up into the wall and then kind of can deploy kind of like a Murphy bed, he called it. And you can see here, he did that with adjustable angle connector here. And then there's also an adjustable angle connector here in the back. Yeah, you can see it there. Adjustable angle connectors there and there. And I believe uh, one of the connections, there's two connections per adjustable angle connector. And I think one of them is loose and this allows it to, to actually kind of slide and fold together. And we can go here and see that in action. There it goes. So he raises it up. And you can see that it maybe the conduit is sleeved over like half inch or something like that. Um, but as you can see, it folds up in kind of Murphy bed style up into the wall. That would allow them to keep the seat over here in the back and people can ride in the back and then they can take that seat out of the campground or wherever they are and camp. So that's really clever. Jason's doing all kinds of really awesome stuff with conduit and maker pipe for his Honda Element. Definitely check out that interview. It'll be linked down below and check out his Instagram, Hank the Tank 724 Thanks so much, Jason, for all the cool stuff you've been sharing. Next up is a project from Mark, and this is a, a trailer canopy extension. So you can see it looks like he already had this canopy that attaches to his trailer door here, and it looks like a pretty standard canopy that you can find. And he wanted to extend the sides of it, and he's doing that with conduit. And you can see here, there's like one horizontal bar, and I'm not sure exactly how it attaches 
to the existing canopy. Maybe it's just resting on something in there. I'm not entirely sure. I think he said he's still working on it, so maybe we'll get some more pictures and updates. But there's a horizontal bar. I see some T-connectors going down at an angle uh, that meet the, the verticals here. And then there's uh, T-connectors. I think there's three total uh, pipes that kind of go down at a vertical and connect to this this side pipe here. And then there's a vertical on each side that goes down. And I think it's all T connectors. I see some end caps on there. And I'm not entirely sure how we attach the canvas. Um, maybe zip tied, not entirely sure. We, we see a lot of zip ties. We actually did a video on different ways that you can attach canvases and canopies and different things like that. But this is really clever. And what's cool is it flat packs and you can keep them inside of the trailer when he's not using them. They don't take up a lot of space at all. As you can see here, this has them folded up nicely against the wall. And then here they are deployed and he's got one for each side. I think he's work, said he's working on sides as well, like that, you know, vertical sides. So maybe he can fully enclose this off. He said he does some work back here when he opens up the door and is kind of making a workshop area underneath this. So this is really clever. Thanks so much, Mark, for sharing this in the MakerPipe Facebook group. We really appreciate it. It's awesome and definitely keep us updated. Next up is a project from Hector, and this is a mini fridge table. Looks like they have a nice back area. Maybe they have a pool. Actually, I think I can see a pool in their reflection. Uh, but maybe they have a pool or maybe they just have a back area they like to sit in. And they wanted mini fridges back there, and especially if you have a pool. We used to have a pool whenever I was a kid. And, you know, you would get in the pool and you'd want to get a drink or get something. You'd jump out and run inside and get water everywhere. And, you know, that's not the best <laughs> the best thing to do. But so having a fridge outside with snacks or drinks, it's really awesome. And you can see they built this table. I see T-connectors in the corners uh, in an interesting way. You know, we see a lot of people do 90s usually to make rectangles or squares. But you can also do this kind of stack design where you have a T-connector like this one here that goes, you know, from side to side. And then on top of it is another one that kind of stacks on top of the T and then sends the pipe back here. And you can do that just as easily as making a 90. And maybe they did that so the fridge wouldn't slide out from the side. I don't know. But whatever the reason was, it, it looks great. Looks like it's working awesome. They've got pipes going from side to side here to actually support the mini fridge. And here's another interesting technique to use the four-way. Uh, so normally we see them kind of flat to add a... A continuous vertical support but they did it sideways to have this horizontal support be one continuous piece it goes through the middle of the connector and then the vertical support pipe is broken up into two pieces then there's also a pipe that's sent to the back and it's just another brace to support the fridges and that's a really interesting technique i wanted to point that out it looks great the fridges are sitting on those pipes there and then it looks like on top they said they used a butcher block or countertop from lowe's which is a really great material, great use of material. I love the way that butcher blocks and countertops look on pipe frames. I recently built a desk using a butcher block from Ikea. So I think it looks great. I have a nice thick you know, piece of wood or butcher block. It looks really great for stuff. So this is awesome. A great place or a great thing to have you know, on your back patio or deck or you know, around the pool. So that's really awesome. Thanks so much, Hector, for sharing that. We really appreciate it. And next up is a jet-powered sled. And this is from a YouTube creator called or named Lewis Weiss. He does all kinds of amazing projects. And recently he did a a red wagon so everybody knows the you know the famous red wagon and he attached a jet engine apparently you can get jet engines online for not that much money well i mean considering what it is it's you know it's a few thousand dollars but he attached that jet engine to a radio flyer and in this project he took that jet engine off and attached it to a sled to make a jet powered sled and he was all doing this to race another youtuber across a frozen lake up up in minnesota and you can see here that he attached it this way, kind of loosely to the frame, uh, just to kind of test out the idea. And then he needed a way to attach it to the frame securely. So he, we sent him some connectors a while back just to try out and play around with. And he attached the connectors to the frame. They apparently fit the diameter of the frame really well. And then that allowed him to just add this conduit brace. He used some wood and supported the, the jet engine is all being held onto the sled with maker pipe and conduit. He made a aluminum box for the fuel tank housing. And it's just a really interesting project. And even the steering mechanism is conduit with a 180 degree connector. And he builds this. He has a great video on kind of going through the process on how he builds it. And then he uh, and then he tries to make it across the uh, the frozen lake and he races because there, there's apparently like a, a YouTube challenge for somebody to make it across the 38 mile frozen lake on an experimental vehicle. So people have tried like bikes with razor wheels and all kinds of crazy stuff. It's a really fun challenge and a really fun way to kind of get out there and do something like this. So this is really awesome. Definitely check out his video. It'll be linked down below. And uh, just like all the projects, they'll be linked down below. You can check them out for more information if you want to see them in more detail. 
Thanks, everybody, for posting your projects. We love doing these episodes, so keep on sharing them, and we'll keep doing them as well. We appreciate you watching, and we'll see you in the next video.